Samurai and Ninja, the military gentry and shadow warriors of feudal Japan. Now they're regularly in all manner of video games, as character archetypes, classics or enemies. Final Fantasy, Street Fighter, even the Transformers had drift, but Samurai and Ninja existed across more than 800 years of history, predating the First Crusade and postdating the American Civil War. Now any great games list is very subjective of course, mechanics, narrative, sound, style and adherence to the topic are very, very important, and for this reason, fighting games such as Samurai Showdown, Bushido Blade, or Kengo Master of Bushido, which are great, but kind of lack narrative structure, are not present here. On the opposite side of the coin, the Kessin franchise is a fantastic experience, but the strategic interface and abundance of narrative over function kind of makes it very niche. So if you're looking to get your feudal Japanese warrior fill, here are the best choices to pick up if you haven't already. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are the 10 best Samurai and Ninja video games, and say it with me kids, OF ALL TIME! Number 10. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice After finding success with Dark Souls and Bloodborne, From Software shifted their hard-to-be-hard -hard Soulsborne formula to feudal Japan in the way of Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. With new enemies pulled from Japanese lore, you play as a shinobi brought back from the dead and given a clockwork mechanical arm. Now, How awesome does that all sound? With increased verticality and stealth mechanics, Sekiro opens up new avenues to approach the deadly problems that you'll face, in ways never before seen in From Software's early games. Likewise, the mechanical arm that the title character has opens up some neat new techniques to use in and out of battle. Another stark change is moving from methodical dodging and striking techniques to whittle down bosses' health bars into more quick twitch counters and overwhelming an enemy's posture in order to deliver a satisfying cinematic killing blow. Like the later Dark Souls, Sekiro also has multiple possible endings, giving it added replay value aside from just choosing the A or B ending after the last boss's defeat. Sekiro also has the added aspect of a game world that grows worse each time you perish, giving even more reason to fight through and to try and stay alive, no matter your own immortality. Number 9. Ninja Gaiden Master Collection So let me ask you something, do you hate yourself? Well if the answer is yes, then I've got just the game for you, Ninja Gaiden, because it hates you too. Also don't hate yourself, you deserve love and respect my friend. The OG of the hard to be hard scene, the 2004 reboot and its sequels are known for crisp controls and unrelenting difficulty. The 2021 Master Collection makes it very easy to decide which one of these gets the preference on this list, and that's because it's all three of them, yes, even the third. The biggest complaints about this collection are that it lacks multiplayer and that it doesn't do anything to change the formula or mechanics of the games that they're remaking, but since the collection is using the Sigma version, you can rest assured that it's about as good as it can be. With the Sigma remakes for 1 and 2, you get the crispest controls, the best frame rates, and the least infuriating camera. Though if you're a complete masochist, be warned though because the Sigma games are perceived to be the easier experiences, partially due to a reduction in on-screen enemies. Ninja Gaiden 1 and 2 are still seminal titles, and the third, well this version anyway, is at best an underrated sequel. Number 8. Onimusha 2 Samurai's Destiny Now, Onimusha was one of the first samurai games for the so-called modern era of gaming, coming out in 2001 and was very, very good. Capcom's mix of fantasy and history created an interesting blend of gameplay, story and visuals. The first game got a remaster in 2018 which was absolutely stunning, assuming you can get over the new soundtrack, which caused a bit of controversy when a new composer actually took credit for the original's work. The latest mainline entry in the series was Onimusha Dawn of Dreams, which is also a great game, but for my money, the second game is the best in the series, with the most likeable characters, mechanics that are as solid as ever, as well as fantastic sounds and visuals, and the branching storyline feature, where well, you have got plenty of bang for your buck. Similarly, while Onimusha 3 Demon Siege is also very good, and has arguably the best intro video in the series, the story just doesn't have the same impact as Onimusha 2, and also the fact that they went through all the trouble to hire Jean Renault to play the second lead, Jacques Blanc, and then had somebody else voice his English dialogue, I mean, what? that's so silly. Why would you hire an actor of that caliber and then dub him over? Silly, silly, silly. Number 7. Ghost of Tsushima there's no way a list about great samurai and ninja games can't include Ghost of Tsushima. While the open world isn't perfect, it is certainly better than many open world titles out there. Here the player controls Jin, in an oddly fictionalized version of the first Mongol invasion of Japan in 1274. Jin is the last survivor of the samurai on the island, and he has to go from a noble samurai warrior to a ninja-like guerrilla fighter, in the hopes of averting the historical result of Tsushima's complete conquest and destruction at the hands of the Mongol army. Jin can be 
be played in multiple styles. You can ride gloriously into battle and fight as a proud samurai, taking on the invaders in fierce one-to-one -one battles, or you can creep in and dismantle their whole army like a sneaky shinobi. The moving storyline and solid combat mechanics are bolstered by several very close to right cultural references, such as a proud samurai taking breaks to compose poetry, even if the haiku didn't actually exist at the time. The waypoint system of using the wind to find your way is also brilliant as well, a clever reference to the legendary divine windstorms that actually beat the Mongols. Number 6. Samurai Warriors 5 if you're a fan of Dynasty Warriors, then you've likely heard of Koi Tecmo's sister series that is set in feudal Japan called Samurai Warriors. Initially just an absolute spin-off of the original series, but with new stages, characters and weapons, the latest entry in the franchise, 2021 Samurai Warriors 5, has really expanded itself out to become a pretty unique thing. The first three games in the series were honestly nothing special compared to the original Dynasty Warriors. The fourth in the series was the first one to score higher than middling reviews in a decade, and so of course the developers sat on the franchise for around seven years years before coming back very, very strong. Samurai Warriors 5 may have the big old 5 in its title, but it's actually more of a reboot than a sequel. With new musical stylings, a totally new art style, and some new interesting mechanics, the fifth game really reinvents the series. But let's be honest, if not for 5, this franchise wouldn't actually be on this list. But thanks to the latest in the series, it is definitely worth picking up and getting your hack and slash on. Number 5. Total War Shogun 2 Thanks to Koi Tecmo, a lot of samurai games wound up being strategy titles due to the Nobunaga's Ambition series. Unfortunately, Nobunaga's Ambition hasn't been quite living up to its storied history. Creative Assembly's Total War series, however, is doing quite well. The very first Total War game was likely a lot of gamers' first introduction to Sengoku history, way back in the year of 2000. Now officially renamed Total War Shogun to match the rest of the franchise's naming theme, the 2011 sequel is still one of the best samurai-related strategy games games out there. It's still not quite as good as their Three Kingdoms or Warhammer spin-offs, but with the improvements that those games have made, it's certainly only a matter of time before a Shogun 3 comes out with all of these same improvements. Until then, Total War Shogun 2 really is a solid strategy title. While you play as a samurai dynamo, you can send Ninja out to do your bidding, so this kind of qualifies as both. Rated Best Strategy Game of 2011 by four different publications, it's still worth the time to play, even 12 years later. Number 4. Aragami a bit of a spiritual successor to the Tenchu series, which failed to make the list because it hasn't actually produced a quality game in over a decade, the first Aragami game was a little stiff and imprecise in its controls, but it had a rather neat premise, a great story, and absolutely fantastic music. The sequel, Aragami 2, has equally good music, though the solid story has been replaced with an admittedly neat co-op stealth action mechanic. The sequel allows you to team up with several of your friends and stealth kill your way through dozens of new levels. While the co-op experience is certainly something, and definitely is a fun way to relive some Tenchu-like experiences, the first game definitely still wins out, due to the more structured style of gameplay, the fluid stealth kill animations, and the wonderful and pretty touching story. In it you play as an Aragami, basically a living shadow sent to rescue a captured princess against an army of people who can throw insta-kill beams of light at you. It's a real shame that the developer Lintzworks recently announced that they were going belly up, ensuring that a third game in the series will likely never see the light of day, pun very much intended. Both Aragami games are still available available and are supposed to stay that way, so if you haven't played them, you've still got time. Number 3. Like a Dragon Ishin now, Ishin was initially a 2014 spin-off to their flagship series following the exploits of Kiryu Kazuma in the industry of Japanese criminal syndicates. Ishin moves the setting from the more modern times in Tokyo to the Bakumatsu period of the late 19th century in Kyoto. It's gotten a recent remake updating the graphics and gameplay and has finally got a Western release. Now, all of the characters in the game are played by the recurring characters in the mainline Like a Dragon series. Kiryu himself plays famous revolutionary Sakamoto Ryoma, and fan favourites like Majima Goro also return as their contemporary counterparts. It's basically the wild melodramatic antics and gameplay of the Like a Dragon series, but all set at the tail end of the Edo period. Katana and pistols abound in this story of revolution, betrayal, and it's even time to run a small farm and pet cats. It also contains a naked fist fight and a steamy sauna, so it literally has everything for everyone. Number 2. Mark of the Ninja in 2012, Mark of the Ninja was put out by Cly Entertainment, the folks who would go on to make Don't Starve and Invisible Ink, and was originally conceived because the company's founder, Jamie Cheng, lamented a lack of stealthy ninja games out in the world. Mark of the Ninja follows an unnamed member of a ninja clan who was given a magical tattoo, but the tattoo is a double-edged sword because while each added bit of ink unlocks new, more powerful techniques and abilities for the player to use, it also leads the main character further down a path towards insanity. Fighting against other ninja, cybernetic security, 
security systems, desert bandits, and military contractors in a 2D world, the player has to climb walls and ceilings, hide in floors and behind flower pots, and can choose lethal or non-lethal methods of dispatching their foes. Working alongside their new teammate Aura, he must avenge the attack on his clan and find out the truth as to why they were attacked in the first place. Aside from the great gameplay, the story is definitely intriguing with cutscenes that were produced in the style of an old cartoon. And number one, Neo 2. Now, Neo began life when Koi decided to develop a game based on an unfinished script by the legendary filmmaker Kurosawa Akira back in 2004. Initially planned as a JRPG, it was deemed unfun by the higher ups. Development then shifted to Omega Force, the team behind the Dynasty Warriors series, and the game became more like the popular Hack and Slash series. But Koi's merger with Tecmo opened up the chance for Team Ninja to work on the project, and by 2012, it had basically become a Ninja Gaiden clone. After scrapping all of that again, a cat and mouse game of ideas shifted through two lead developers, and ultimately the final design turned the game into a Soulsborne set during the Sekigahara campaign, with the player taking up the mantle of William Adams. Now, Many games that are stuck in development hell for over a decade wind up being absolute garbage, but Neo bucks the trend by having solid gameplay and, especially with its sequel, great cinematics and story, plus a pretty comprehensive character creator, which was definitely worth the wait in many ways. Neo is often regarded as one of the best Soulsborne clones not produced by From Software, and and with Koi Tecmo's beautiful cinematics and love of history, it leans into its atmosphere gloriously. And there we go, my friends. Those were the 10 best samurai and ninja video games. And say it with me, kids, of all time. I hope that you enjoyed that. And please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Instagram and Twitter, where it's at RetroJ, but the O is a zero. And you can swing over to the Future Games Show, where I do all of my regular gaming content outside of what culture. So I hope to see you over there. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. I hope you're treating yourself well, my friend, with love and respect because you deserve the best things in life, right? And do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise. You are a massive ledge. So remember, as always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.